thank you and welkom in Amsterdam. And nice to see you here. And I'd like to talk about the challenges of the various clinical manifestations of, of BP, the diagnosis and burden for patients and caregivers. I'd like to introduce a patient. It's one of my patients from the outpatient clinics. Um, so he approved and he supported to show his clinical images here. So he's um, a Mark and he had no a personal or family history of autoimmune disease previously. Um, and uh, he's had non-Hodgkin lymphoma in the past, but already long-term remission. So with his presentation on the left, you see his um, tense blisters on his feet, his leg, um, torso. He also had large red plaques and patches on his arms, his legs, his back, his chest. So quite generalized disease. And um, he mainly mentioned his intense pruritus and his uh, pain affecting the sleep. Um, so he had no other symptoms, um, no joint pain, fever, chills, or weight loss, um, but mainly his itch was the, the, the main problem for him. So you might recognize these clinical images, right, as dermatologists. Um, we know BP as a, a chronic relapsing autoimmune uh, blistering disease, and there's different clinical phenotypes or maybe phases of disease. So on the left, you see the non bullous presentation of face. So with the same intense itch, uh, with or without inflammatory skin lesions. So these lesions may uh, range from urticarial plaques to eczematous lesions. And uh, they may persist for weeks to months before blisters develop. Or about 20%, we estimate, um, uh, uh, remains non bullous phenotype. So on the right, you see more a typical bullous pemphigoid uh, images. So with the uh, same intensely pruritic um, bullous dermatosis. The blisters usually arising on red inflamed skin. Uh, they may present at, at different stages of, um, with progression to erosions, to uh, crust, um, to bleeding. Um, so it can be painful as well. And um, the erythema may be not that visible in, in skin of color. So sometimes they um, have preceding non bullous phase, but it, it's not always the case. So about the numbers, we see BP a lot and increasing in numbers. So the global incidence is estimated up to um, 76 cases per million. And the prevalence uh, is estimated to, to range from 0.13 to 0.113%. Uh, um, both appear to be increasing which might be related to the second part, aging. So majority of cases, they occur in, in, in aged elderly patients above 60 years. So the incidence and prevalence increases twofold each for, for a successive 10 years of age group from 60 years. So for gender, there's not really um, conclusive uh, data for a predilection. So etiology of BP is, is complex, it's not completely understood. And uh, we know it's caused by autoimmunity to, to hemidesmosomal proteins, BP180, BP230, leading to the production of antibodies, which initiates the inflammatory response. So for, for the inflammatory phenotype that we see, we know the background, but not exactly the cause. So some treatments, um, some drugs may trigger a uh, bullous pemphigoid. So it's been associated with an increased risk, and maybe you'll recognize some of these drugs, uh, DPP-4 inhibitors for diabetes, loop diuretics, and PD-1, PD-L1 immunotherapy. Um, also neuroleptics or anti-Parkinson's disease uh, medications. So how to diagnose these patients with BP? Um, it's a multi-step procedure um, with a comprehensive clinical assessment and, and lab work. So first on the left, clinical assessment. Uh, of course, we need medical history and the patient reported symptoms such as the itch and pain and mainly also physical examination. So we've seen the typical clinical manifestations of bullous pemphigoid, but also of the non bullous uh, uh, variant. So for a next step for uh, a skin biopsy, um, is recommended to perform both um, histopathology uh, to, to 
uh, assess the level of the blister, infiltrate, and direct immunofluorescence for the um, visualization of the antibodies. So to confirm and to specify, um, you can perform serum testing, serology, so indirect immunofluorescence on salt split skin, for example, or ELISA, to specify diagnosis. So if we go back to our patient, um, we see that the tense blisters, the large plaques, the intense pruritus he reported, um, when going to his findings in, in investigations, so we saw the biopsy for histopathology showed the subepidermal split and uh, containing eosinophils. Uh, so that's a typical picture, right? Um, the biopsy uh, for immunofluorescence confirmed IgG and complement depositions along the basement membrane zone and salt split skin confirmed circulating IgG antibodies. So by ELISA, it was specified as against PP180. So to conclude at this point, Mark is diagnosed with bullous pemphigoid, and uh, we see quite a typical clinical picture here. So about burden of disease. So he mentioned um, mainly the terrible itch that, that just got, won't go away, and um, it keeps him awake, and he doesn't have much energy left um, because of the itch and pain of quite extensive disease. So the rash is quite generalized and it's hard to reach for topical treatment, for example. Um, and it's also embarrassing because it's, it's visible to the eye. So about um, comorbidities. And this is a, a population with some associated comorbidities. So on the left, you see neurological conditions. About up to 40% of BP patients presents with neurological disease. So it can be an early stage or advanced stage. It includes um, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, dementia, and also stroke. So on the right, you'll see the non-neurological conditions and uh, often have more cardiovascular dis disease, diabetes, uh, malignancies of other autoimmune or inflammatory conditions, and an increased risk for skin infections. So we've seen the burden of BP. So you can see physical burden uh, with the discomfort, the itch of the pain, the sleep disturbance and fatigue, and also dispigmentation uh, during different phases of disease. You also have the socioeconomic burden. So for caregivers, for family, and quite increased healthcare costs um, with visits, with lab monitoring, treatment, uh, increased rates for hospitalization. So it's quite a difficult population of patients. For mental health burden, you will, um, well, often we hear the anxiety for relapse, but also it's, it's impaired quality of life, uh, depression, loneliness, and it can be embarrassing because of the lesions. So also for treatment, you may recognize you need quite some visits for these patients for lab work, but also the safety concerns for mainly corticosteroids and the immunosuppressive drugs that we use. So um, can be uh, difficult in daily practice for um, a treatment administration, topical treatment as well. So about prognosis of bullous pemphigoid. Um, here you see a Kaplan-Meier curve of um, a BP cohort and survival. So you see BP in the blue line and age matched uh, general population, the dotted line, so expected survival. So you see it's quite lower and um, it has a threefold excessive mortality. And um, there's, there's some predictive factors for this. So of course the old age, the low Karnofsky score for, for daily um, activity, often multimorbidity with the comorbidities, um, high serum titus as well, and um, high doses of corticosteroids. So you have a risk of secondary infections of skin or systemic infections, and the neurological disease, mainly dementia, also has, is a predictive factor for this uh, prognosis. Um, now we know that Mark has bullous pemphigoid. I think we move on to what mechanism drives this disease.
Thank you.